Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to MOOC NPTEL course on Bioengineering and Interface with Biology and Medicine. In today's class, we will study Mendelian genetics in more detail. We will discuss the chromosomal basis of inheritance and will find out what are the heritable factors involved as defined by the Mendel. Uh, I must say that you know Mendel made huge contributions for uh, identifying that there are certain factors heritable factors which transmit from one to next generation. But you know quite long time people did not uh, know that what those factors are. Uh, and then you know also people did not have too much information about whether those factors you know in which manner they are inherited. So uh, few scientists started making more investigation and one scientist who had made huge contribution in the area is uh, Morgan and I will talk about some of his experiments. Uh, but before you know kind of what we are going to talk is are the genes for the P property which we are talking are they present on the chromosomes and do they segregate as a part of the uh, divisions meiotic divisions the way we have been studying the meiosis process right. So in this case here we have yellow and round and we have green and uh, wrinkled seeds uh, as a part of meiosis these gametes are separated and if these gametes contain the genes, those genes which are giving the properties like you know yellow and uh, round seed or green or wrinkled seed. So are they also getting segregated as a part of these divisions which are happening. So genes are located on the chromosomes and what is the behavior of these chromosomes during the meiosis process and whether Mendel's law which had we have talked about you know the segregation and independent assortment is also valid as a part of these chromosomal basis of separation. Little complex slide but uh, you know one could start thinking and refreshing yourself about you know meiotic cell division. So as a part of law of segregation the two alleles for each of these genes will separate during the gamete formation which you can follow the same what we have done in the meiotic process. And the law of independent assortment it means alleles of genes on the non-homologous chromosomes would assort independently during the gamete formation. So it is very well color coded here in the red and blue showing that you know your capital R and small r alleles for the same gene properties how in the meiotic process they are getting segregated. So these are the kind of assumptions made thinking about whether what Mendel has discussed whether that has any uh, basis at the chromosomal level. So so far what we talked is essentially that Mendel's dihybrid crosses one could correlate also at the looking at the behavior of the chromosomes during meiosis. During meiosis these homologous chromosomes they get segregated and therefore alleles also get segregated. Uh, the behavior of chromosomes uh, in meiosis process of the F1 generation as well as after the fertilization in the F2 generation uh, could be observed by what Mendel has already shown uh, in his crosses. So while these are some assumption but there is no experimental evidence that how one could prove this. And this is an area where I must say that another scientist who made huge contribution uh, is Dr. Morgan uh, who studied the Mendelian inheritance and what are its physical basis at the chromosomal level. So uh, this is a scientist for whom we are talking Thomas Hunt Morgan Columbia University and he selected a model system which is Drosophila or the fruit fly. So, so far we have been talking mainly about pea plants and uh, but at, at some point I had mentioned to you that many people like to work on Drosophila because again you know it comes in many properties you can grow them, grow them very fast. Uh, I am sure you would have seen Drosophila in you know some time on the banana peel you know you, you will see those uh, small flies with you know red eyes. Uh, and people make these you know cultures of these particular uh, Drosophila stalks they make. This is showing you here you know lot of labs which works in the genetics and developmental biology area. They have the stalks of these Drosophila strains 
Uh, and these Drosophila, you can make mutations in different genes and you can keep those and keep growing those which can be very handy for doing lot of experiments and testing your hypothesis. So, you know, what is shown here, you know, you have small tubes and in those tubes you are having banana peels and some nutrients on which these flies can grow and people store them and made them and make sure that, you know, they are maintained well uh, for doing lot of genetic experiments. So, this is what where we are right now, but at that point in 19th century, Morgan, uh, you know, uh, started working on Drosophila and thought about looking at Mendelian genetics at the fly level. So, let us see what kind of experiments he did. Uh, finally, he provided evidences that chromosomes are indeed the location of Mendel's uh, heritable factor. So, I have, you know, uh, there is no suspense on that. I, I, I already made the conclusion, but now let us uh, see the experimental system and what kind of things he did. So, now nomenclature of the things the way we have been discussing from the pea plant will slightly change. Uh, here we are talking about phenotypes of Drosophila. Uh, some characteristics if these are commonly found, for example, red eyes, that is wild type character. And if a deviation of that is found, that is known as mutant type behavior. So, if this particular eye is white eye, which is not commonly found in Drosophila, that is a mutant type behavior, whereas the red eye is commonly found normal phenotype, that is wild type. So, I am sure now you are familiar with the wild type and the mutant terminologies. Let us look at some of the, uh, how you can denote them. So, so far we are talking about in, in the pea plant context, uh, you know, only simple nomenclatures. Now, let us add a little bit complexity here. When we say wild type, you are denoting with a plus sign. And when you have a mutant, then there is a no plus sign. We are also showing here male and female chromosomes. So, this is a male Drosophila, so XY chromosomes and X is having W uh, suffix on that uh, or supercrypt on that. So, that is a, a mutant behavior. Now, this particular thing is uh, XX, a female, both contain W plus W plus that is a wild type which will go give the red eye pattern. Keep this in mind, I think there are some crosses which we have to do, which now we have to use this kind of nomenclature. So, if in a given cross uh, some point, uh, we will talk to you about a given property, its wild type and the mutant behavior, you can denote those with plus or uh, without plus. All right, so now uh, let us see what kind of cross uh, Morgan did. So, he took uh, these wild type female uh, fruit fly as well as mutant white eyed male fruit fly and then observed their progenies in the F1 and F2 generation. So, in this case, uh, the female is red eyed here and male is white eyed in the parent generation. In the F1 generation, all the offsprings, they showed red eye. Just imagine what Mendel's experiment were, right? So, purple was the dominant and now that was shown in all the F1 generation. Something similar he also seen. Now, he wanted to follow this particular cross in the F2 generation and I would ask all of you now, to start thinking and start making this kind of cross. So, let us start doing that. All right. So, we have the, uh, so, so you have to know now start making X and Y chromosomes and, and then also you have to denote what is a wild type and what is mutant, right? Then only you can say that offsprings, how many are male and female and what are their characteristics. So, let us try out simple, the same way upon a square. So, let us draw only for F2 generation. So, this is Y chromosome and we have uh, this X chromosome which is having W plus. All of you are doing that, right? All right, I'll come and see your results. All right.
I'm sure right now it's not very difficult for you to do the crosses, but uh, you have to assume that you have to know the terminologies. You have to know how genetic crosses can be done in different type of uh, properties, which we will describe. All right, so I'm sure all of you have done your cross by now. So what is the phenotypic ratio? We are looking at one property, which is red eye versus white eye. White eye is the mutant property, and red eye is the wild eye property. And these signs are for male and female, which also is important to draw those. So it is not so difficult, right? Because you have done already these kind of crosses for Mendelian uh, genetics in the P, and that time 3 is to 1 very, very simply defined. Yes. All right, so a good observation that whether we have no gene on the Y chromosome, and that is, I think, a right observation that what Morgan also proved here that uh, certain genes, they are only carried on a specific type of either X chromosome or Y chromosome. So some properties are linked to specific sex chromosomes. They are not present in both the chromosomes. And therefore, and this observation did not come uh, beforehand, it came only after this cross. So now if you realize, we have only one white-eyed male, right, which is the mutant type. So because he also observed 3 to 1 ratio, three other uh, uh, flies were red-eyed, two of them female and one male. But one of the uh, white-eyed male, it was, he was observing this only male. So based on that, when he you know, made this crosses, he realized that the segregation is happening, but there is some sort of link to the chromosomal basis of that. Probably they, these genes are located on some specific chromosomes, X chromosome or Y chromosome, and that's why they are seeing this mutant behavior is coming only in the uh, male type here. So I think you know, it's important in genetics that uh, you should make those observations for a given cross, and then use all the properties, label properly, and then probably you cannot make any mistake. So this is kind of cross which we just talked. Uh, we have these gametes from the sperm, uh, W plus and the Y chromosome here. From the X, we have W plus and W. And now if you are making this crosses, you have only one white-eyed uh, male. You have remaining three uh, flies which are all red-eyed, yes. So phenotype wise, phenotype wise there are three are red eyed. Phenotype if you look at of the four, it's three to one. All right, so uh, what we just uh, discussed the cross, uh, the main points of this cross are that the mutant or the white eye trait that is recessive as compared to the wild eye, wild type of the red eye trait which is W plus. In the recessive trait, white eye was expressed only in the male in the F2 generation. I think you had rightly ob observed this. And that led Morgan to conclude that I color gene is located on the X chromosome and not on the Y chromosome. So while that's segregating, it is some specificity that where these genes are located. So conclusion from the experiment is uh, 
we saw the evidence that chromosomes are indeed the locations of what Mendel has defined those heritable factors. So Mendel was only able to say that you know there are some factors which are transmitting from one to the next generation. Uh, Morgan was also able to show that there are some chromosomal bases to them. All right, so genotypic ratio you can say in the female what is the genotypic ratio, in the male what is the genotypic ratio and overall genotypic, genotypic ratio of all the off, offsprings. So in that way yeah, it can be you can say that you know among the female this is the genotypic ratio, among the male this is the genotypic ratio, all among all of the uh, four what is the phenotypic ratio or even you can you know split into male and female and you can put in the uh, ratio form. So if you th think about uh, human and the chromosomal basis of sex in human, uh, we have 44 pair of uh, the 44 autosomes and XY chromosomes are there. So these 22 plus X or 22 plus Y uh, part of the sperm and 22 plus X uh, part of the egg. This is known as the XY system uh, where X and Y chromosomes uh, and the you know, various genes which are linked to them. Uh, are getting segregated. So uh, sex of a child uh, actually depends on whether the sperm contains X or the Y chromosome because egg will always carry X chromosome only. So the sex of child will be derived from the uh, sperm uh, whether it's coming from the X part or the Y. So there are many sex linked genes which are only found on the X chromosome uh, or the Y chromosomes and the Y linked genes are actually much smaller in number only around 78 genes have been found uh, on the Y chromosomes whereas on the X chromosome almost 1100 genes are there. So a lot of properties are only uniquely present on the X chromosome or on the Y chromosome and they will follow that pat pattern coming from these chromosomes. Uh, if you look at this uh, circle can you read something in that? How many people cannot read? Cannot read? How many people cannot read? All right. So well, uh, if in case uh, you are not able to read, I think you should pay some close attention to this, uh, and you should go for some test. You might be not able to distinguish the colors so so easily, and uh, this is uh, you know reality, right? Because. Uh, for many of the uh, exams especially for the railways, military etc., they also test for your color blindness. Can you distinguish the colors clearly? Uh, so many of the disorders which are uh, sex linked includes red green color blindness, uh, muscle uh, dystrophy, you have night blindness and hemophilia. So many of these diseases are actually derived uh, based on the transmission of X linked recessive traits especially for the red green color blindness. So let's think about the red green color blindness which is much more apparent case. Uh, let's think about again some of the ways to denote the conditions. Please pay attention to, to this slide. Uh, a lot of questions are going to be based on this. So uh, for a color blindness to happen this gene is going to be on the recessive allele which we are denoting from the a small n. If an individual is unaffected or normal eye, normal vision, then we are showing from the uh, this uh, white square. If it is carrier, we are showing from the light shade, if color blind from the dark shade. So this case, let's think about female and male, a cross is happening. In this case, it is normal, uh, when we have normal phenotype, it means capital N and capital N, right, on both the chromosomes. And if it is carrying, the recessive allele which is small n then only you have the disorder. So if I am you know just showing you this what is this cross is you know between what type of male and female. This male is color blind yeah. and female? Female is unaffected. All right so female is unaffected and male is color blind all right. Now let's take second situation. In this case what will happen? What? Female is? Hmm? Carrier. Yes. And male? Unaffected. Male is unaffected and female is carrier. Let's take the third situation. Uh, 
female is carrier and male is uh, color blind. All right. So I'm hoping that you know, in addition to looking at just the colors, you're also paying attention here that whenever there is a small n, which is recessive allele, is there. Uh, uh, with the male, it is only it, it has to be uh, only one on the X chromosome, so it's always getting color blind. Now in the female, even if it is present in one copy, then still it is only carrier; it is not showing the full effect, right? Now let's try to take these conditions and then do the crosses and see what will be the fate of uh, these offsprings coming from these crosses. Please start doing that. So that's the first situation we had talked. Second one is that we have male which is normal and female is carrier. Third cross, we have male him color blind, and female is a carrier. All right, all of you are doing it, right? Also should write you know, based on the x, 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 y which are male and female. All right, so I'm sure all of you have done the cross as well. So you have to now do these crosses and give me the answers for each of the cross, what will be the progenies look like. And when the questions will be asked, you'll be actually given a situation when that, you know, if a cross happens and the kind of child which are born, 50% of them are carrier and 50% of them are normal, what could be the genotype of the parents. So then you have to go backwards. So let's go one at a time. The first cross, is everybody trying now? Everybody is comfortable? How about this side? Okay, so let's think about, you know, different crosses which we have done. Uh, the first situation is, when we have a color blind male and we have the normal female. From this, the progeny which are born, of them 50% of them are carrier. Okay? 
you will not see apparent of uh, any change in the phenotype but the 50 percent of the child are actually going to be carrier so a color blind father is going to transmit these alleles to their daughter it's only transmitting and it is not going to be apparent in the next generation second situation the second cross we have the uh, female which is carrier and now male is normal in this case out of the four progeny there is a probability that one of the male child will be color blind and one of the female will be the carrier now let's think about the third situation when we have a color blind father and mother is a carrier in this situation you have 50 percent child who are going to be color blind and 25 percent of them will be carrier so many times if a family has the history of carrying these kind of disorders uh, so it's good idea for them to do genetic testing or get genome counseling before marriages because you want to know that you know what could be the fate of those small genes and whether they will be apparent in the progeny and, and therefore many people make those kind of choices in this case if let's you know imagine here in this case uh, even if the the father is actually color blind but as long as mother is totally normal and not carrier then the progeny will not have any effect but if this is the third situation is there you know the father is color blind and they are not doing gen any genetic testing they are uh, marrying with anybody and then that uh, female is also carrier then the possibility is that you know most of the child will be either color blind or they will be carrier so these are reality and many uh, times when these genetic disorders happen people do these genetic testing to ensure that uh, they can avoid this situation okay so these things can be just done uh, in the same kind of mathematical probabilities the way you uh, read many other mathematics questions so conclusions from the uh, these crosses are their fathers pass x linked alleles to all of their daughters but none, none, none to their sons and these female these child daughters they are actually carriers they are going to carry from the uh, that generation to the next generation mothers can pass the x linked genes and alleles to both the son and daughters any male which receives the recessive allele from the mother will express the trait sometime i'll just give you this kind of statement and i'll ask you to show this is true or, or false by doing a cross the small cross which i showed you are very simple but it becomes difficult when you have been just given a statement and you have to derive the crosses based on that so i am hoping that you know from this exercise you are getting more comfortable now and you should be very easily able to derive those crosses now so far more males than females actually have x linked recessive disorders so absence of one or more of the proteins uh, which is involved in doing the blood clotting is not found in this particular disease condition and therefore there is excessive blood loss happens from the wound site uh, in fact you know uh, nowadays because of all our advancement understanding of doing genetic engineering and protein research it is now possible that we have those clotting factors which in the purified form present which could be injected in the individuals and one could try to overcome this deficiency but of course that time it was much more serious uh, issue and what was you know more uh, interesting that you know people started observing queen's family queen victoria's family that uh, you know many of their descendants were actually uh, passing these traits so many of the royal family children were carrying these alleles and therefore some of them started showing these uh, symptoms and then it became more apparent that it's not only one uh, child which is having problem there are you know many from that family uh, who are having these issues because their intermarriages were from the very small uh, you know uh, group of individuals from spain russia etc but this was you know definitely one of the very interesting uh, fact it was happening in royal family so it became much more apparent uh, and everybody started not noticing this problem and that time some scientists published a study on hemophilia and then they you know this thing became much more like a case study for all the scientific community to find out what is happening in the royal family and how the genes are getting inherited okay so the conclusion is that uh, you may 
now overcome some of these deficiencies because we have understanding of how to synthesize these proteins and the clotting factors which could be injected in the individual and that may prevent the blood loss. Uh, but nevertheless, understanding the genetic basis is very crucial and these kind of uh, genetic counseling per se can actually help us to avoid many of these kind of uh, mishappenings. So by now you are familiar with the chromosomal basis of inheritance. You now know that Mendelian inheritance has its physical basis in behavior of chromosomes. It is the behavior of chromosomes during meiosis that accounts for Mendel's law of segregation and independent assortment. Morgan independently tested Mendel's experiment and provided evidence that chromosomes are indeed the location of Mendel's heritable factors. You also studied sex linked inheritance and how Y linked genes mainly help determine sex while X linked gene help in determining genes for many characteristics but unrelated to the sex. In the next class, we will study genetic recombination and linkage which is very important in determining the inheritance of characters. See you in the next class. Thank you.